Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another oscilloscope. It's from SE Labs, also called Laboratories in England. It is, I think, from about 1980. I was able to uh, find a page uh, on Radio Museum about this oscilloscope. I don't know if you can see this. It's not super easy to see, but it's a plug-in and frame systems. So we got the plug-in card here for channel 1 and 2. It's called SM599. And then we got a dual time base called SM602. And the main frame is called 112. Whew, it's nearly 14 kilos, so it's quite heavy. And here is the name tag and label and all that with the full information. We've of course got brightness input as well. And uh, oh yeah, look at the input voltage selector. So we got this switch and that switch combined to make up all the different possible combinations. It also says a little bit about the 100 watts is what I should expect. So this is also very useful information. And uh, here is the old special English mains power. And I was very uh, lucky to get the cable with uh, the mating connector for this unit because they are a little bit rare and difficult to get. But first, I uh, need to do uh, one of my deep going visual inspection. I kind of like the way you open this and all that. It's just these quick lock. Just turn, click, click, click. And easy, easy. Off you go with the side. Look at that. Nice and beautiful. Oh, man, that is nice. It gives it a good solid tilt i kind of like that it feels like a super good quality as well so of course this one is a lot heavier than a conventional scope about the same size due to all the extra metal and material needed to do all this plug in you see we have another little extra case and all this for stability that will, of course, be the power supply. We also got some more power supply stuff here, big hefty capacitors. And there is something I find a little bit funny. What is that? So there's a can, says EM1. What is going on in that one? I can't wait <laughs> to see what that is all about. And I think that is... Um, Probably deflection amplifier stages. You see those hefty transistors for driving something like that. I was not able to find any schematics online, so I will just use my own little skills here to figure out what is going on. And that is, of course, the time base unit. And it's a, I think it is a super nice dual. Time base, I will of course take this out and let's have a little look. So this is the left side. So this is what I was talking about. It's that easy. Ha ha. Look at that. So that's the other deflection. This is, of course, the vertical deflection amplifier. That one is supposed to be really, really fast. 
and here it's driving the deflection plates of the oscilloscope we got impedance matching inductors and resistors and all that beautiful it's very very compact i'm not super impressed about the isolation distance you can see wires here that are touching the side panel and that will be contrast so that will be high voltage stuff and that is of course the big hefty transformer here at the back this is a good placement center and let's have a look here's ah look at that so that can consist of some funky components <laughs> oh what is that so now the plug-in module is out and i'm gonna have a little file fine check what is going on in there look at the two connectors for the two modules we got some springy they're probably going to make good ground connection all the way around so when i was trying to pull this out of course i had my fingers uh, a little bit too close and then this this one is here is super sharp and then uh, i scraped my finger so better be a little bit more careful absolutely amazing design i kind of like it see the thick thick aluminium not one but two to make it good stiff and stable the two plug-in modules they are of course individually interchangeable as well and this is done again if you look here this one and that one down there and then you just use a screwdriver and go all the way in release and release and then you can take these two apart and then change the different yeah okay but at least they need to be mounted together and then you plug in both of them at the same time that is how it works i want you to see the time base adjustment that is the big one here i don't know how easy that is to see but it goes around like that fantastic feeling and if i pull it see then i can release half of it so now it's only one of the time pieces. Now we go but down again here. See all the knobs, how they go in. All that mechanics. Isn't it just lovely? Oh, that was some extra trimmers. <laughs> this is uh, quite amazing. It looks a little bit like this is quite fast, this oscilloscope. I haven't yet figured out uh, what is the speed. Must be a little bit modern. See, we've got probe power as well. And all the different adjustments here for timing, compensation, and all that. So that is the entire analog input section. And that is uh, the time base circuit board. Look at that fascinating transformer. And then another circuit board with some more stuff. Maybe we can figure out. Oh, that cannot be. Look at the date code. 71. And 71. 70. It cannot be that old. 
the rest of the stuff here. I think I saw the radio museum, they said about 1980. Of course they can be wrong, but why would they use those old chips in a uh, 1980 unit? Better look at some more chips. Aha, uh -huh, 74 and 78. So yeah, they are using old chips. Amazing, so 78 is the newest so far. I will go around and see what else I can find that could indicate my age. But 78 is close to the 80. Well, well, so far I don't see any reason why I should not be able to power this up. Let's look at that. Mm -hmm. And another circuit board in there. I mean, it, they really try to super power pack this one. I got good news. I was able to tilt these boards up. See, there's one little screw here, and then you can tilt up the boards. That is the little box I was curious about. And what do you know? This is the vertical delay line. So you can imagine all the signals to the deflection amplifier goes via a delay line. And uh, this fixes the delay that trigger and start sweep takes. And that means we are able to see the leading edge of the signal that we are triggering on due to this delay. Yeah. I Better put all this back together and let's see if it works. So this is the first uh, power on and let's see what's happening. I think this is the main power on switch and I turned this off. That is a little bit on purpose because I want to know that the switch also works. And then what have we got here? It's using 72 watts, 80 watts. And remember, we saw on the back side of the unit, uh, maximum 100 watts. We got a lamp here. Is that, does that smell normal? Um, oh, there's a dot. We got a dot. Here we go. But we also got some really funky smell. So focus is okay. Ooh, yo, 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 brightness is. Look at that. It's. I'm not super happy about this uh, smell though. I think I've already figured this out. So this is of course the horizontal amplifier. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, we've got so many reflections. It's terrible. This screen is terrible when it comes to reflection. But I see hot transistors and cold transistors. I don't know if it's super easy to see. I'm sorry about that. But there is some, some stuff that is not working here in the deflection amplifier system. And um, this is the horizontal um, that is not working. So that probably explains why any of my sweep or anything is not working at all. It's just fixed right there. If I look at my vertical amplifier, see, I got a dot here on one channel and the other channel. So I'm in chop mode right now. So this proves all this is working. I got nothing working here. And I think that probably this part here is working. I don't know, but amplifier is not working. Okay. Well, here is some external sweepity sweepity. Ah, position is working. Aha, that is interesting. How is that possible to to have a that is not expected? Okay. 
That is interesting. So why is this not working? But I can move it. Well, well, I will play a little bit more. I am very happy to show. Of course, I was able to repair it. And, uh, well, I didn't find any schematics online. So I was a little bit scared and worried about all my time base issues. And, of course, I didn't have any time base at all and no matter what i dialed in i couldn't get the damn thing to work and i saw position is working and then i went to my time base and i was poking around with a, the end of a, a screwdriver and hammering on everything and it just didn't have any success and then i t did a tiny tiny little of a turn back and forward in all the trimmers and this trimmer here is the output amplifier offset or something like that and when i turned it the picture moved a little bit left and right and then suddenly ping full sweep all things work it was that trimmer that was not having any kind of contact how lucky is that so yeah now it works so i want to try something really funny so i have now my um through load so this is a 50 ohm termination a through termination we have now one megahertz and uh, let me show you there's a little detail here you see the little dotted lines in each side when the peak reaches the dotted lines you see here and here then you have minus 3 db and this is what you need to aim for um when you want to measure the bandwidth all right so here's one megahertz and here we go that will be i don't know if that's easy to see but that is the dotted lines right there let's see what happens if i crank it up yeah see it's still triggering and uh, i can of course pull this one and there you have it i can probably also see Crank up the brightness and focus that and whatnot. And this is 100 megahertz. I think I am a little bit impressed it could do that. So here is a, another really cool thing I want to show you. This is a one microsecond pulse and it's repeating uh, 100 kilohertz. So if we zoom out, you'll see we have a nice low duty cycle like that. Let's crank it up like that. See the leading edge. We can easily see the leading edge due to this delay line I was talking about previously. And we have really nice and sharp edges and all that. Let me try some funny things. This is the leading edge. And if I change the rise time look at that now it's really nice and smooth so this is 20 nanoseconds of the rise time let me try and poke around with the fall time so this is yeah, one nanosecond of uh, fall time but let's uh, also adjust this to a little bit slower like that so six nanoseconds let's go 10 yeah so that's 10 nanoseconds and now it looks really really nice and uh, perfect and this is also something to do with the bandwidth uh, of every little uh, input details here of this uh, scope and it's really nice and uh, sharp that picture so i think this is the last thing i want to say and that is thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.